Welcome, my name is Tim. And in this short video, I'm gonna show you the proper procedure for troubleshooting a faulty dual run capacitor in a residential air conditioner. Let's take a look at the run capacitor first. This is the run capacitor here. You'll notice it has three terminals on it. And what we have here in the case of a dual run capacitor is really two capacitors in one. We have a capacitor between the common terminal and the terminal marked fan with the red wire on it that provides capacitance to the outdoor fan motor or condenser fan motor. We also have an additional capacitor within this housing between the Herm terminal and the common terminal. And this is the capacitor for the compressor motor. Now it's possible that the entire capacitor could fail, resulting in both of those motors not operating, or in this case here, like I'm gonna show you, just one of the capacitors has failed within the dual run capacitor. So let's get started. We're gonna to go to the thermostat and click on the selector switch to call for cooling. Be sure to click OK in the procedure guide at the top. Next, let's take a look at which loads are running. Well, our indoor fan's running, so we can click yes here. And when we go to the outdoor unit, we see that the outdoor fan or condenser fan motor is running, but it appears our compressor is not. So we're gonna click yes that the outdoor fan motor is running. Now, is the compressor running? No. However, it's important to know if it's cycling or not. Uh, usually when you have a failure of a capacitor, either a start or run capacitor, or possibly a faulty starting relay, uh, better known as the potential relay, the compressor will usually try to start on the run winding, it'll draw a locked rotor amperage, and it'll cycle on the overload protector. So we're gonna assume that that's occurring, that the compressor is actually off due to its overload cycling it off. Now to check the capacitors, we need to turn the power off. So we're gonna click on the disconnect handle, click OK on the procedure guide, and we're gonna to proceed to checking both capacitors. Now it doesn't matter what order you check these in, we're gonna begin with the start capacitor. Now it's gonna be very important to discharge the capacitors prior to disconnecting or isolating them. Uh, this has already been done for you on the SIM. So we can now click on the start capacitor and we can isolate or disconnect the wires from it. Click OK in the procedure guide. And next we're gonna measure the capacitance value in microfarads across the start capacitor. Now this particular start capacitor is rated for 200 microfarads. So let's see what we've got. When we place the leads across the orange glowing hotspots, we do in fact have 200 microfarads. So our start capacitor is not at fault here. So we're gonna click yes that we have 200 microfarads. And our next step is to disconnect the wires from the run capacitor. So let's click on that, click isolate, which will disconnect the wires. And now we're gonna measure capacitance across the Herm and common terminal or the compressor portion of the run capacitor. We clicked OK, and now we're gonna measure our capacitance. Now, the rating on this one should be 25 microfarads, and you can look right on the side of the capacitor. It'll provide you with the rating on the capacitor. We're gonna place the leads across the orange hotspots from Herm to common, and we notice we have zero microfarads here. Well, this indicates that this portion of the capacitor is faulty, and the capacitor is gonna to need to be replaced. So we don't have 25 microfarads, so we're gonna click no on the procedure guide, and we're gonna replace the run capacitor. But before we do that, let's take a look at the wiring diagram for the outdoor unit. When we do this, we can see the capacitors that we just checked here, and you'll notice both capacitors are in series to the start winding, the orange wire going through the potential relay to the start winding in addition to the run capacitor. Now the start winding gets removed from the circuit once the motor's up to speed. However, the run capacitor remains in the circuit, limiting current and promoting a phase shift to the start winding. And in most cases, when the run capacitor fails, the compressor will attempt to start, but will not be able to turn over. And this is due to the fact that the combined starting capacitance uh, for this particular compressor motor is the sum of the two capacitors. So if we lose the run capacitor, uh, typically, depending on load on the compressor, it typically will not allow the compressor to start. So I'm gonna store the wiring diagram, and we're gonna click on the dual run capacitor and click replace on the menu. Once you've done that, Reconnect your wires, click OK on the procedure guide, and we need to turn the power back on. Once you've turned the power back on, verify that all loads are operating, 
And in addition, go up to the space and verify that cool air is being received at the registers. And we can see here that it is uh, as evidenced by this graphic here. Again, any confusion that you have in this process, simply click the top icon and you can review the procedure guide in a step-by-step -step basis. Well, good luck on your service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. You can try our on-demand VR-enabled learning for HVAC by signing up for a free trial. Go to interplaylearning.com to get started.